the illustrated journey to the center of the whole, a path to self-mastery, by Richard S. Omura. There is no out without the in. There is no whole without the part. This is where we start, just a human-like animal, eating, sleeping, defecating, reproducing, doing the animal things we need to do. We've all been at this stage, human but very animalistic, foolish but realistic, using human ingenuity for animal purposes, giving humanity a bad name. Most of us are here, enduring strife, indecisive, uncertain on the big questions of life, death, purpose, and destiny, just living, just existing, thrown about by the whims of circumstances. Until we start thinking, wondering, is there more to life? And begin to seek and to ask, what is the meaning of my life? These people heard the question and answered with their actions. What do you see? Do you see just animals? Or, bite an animal, it'll bite back or flee. Fight or flight, fight or flight, just a mechanical response. We're not animals, we're not machines. We reject this mechanical response. We reject it, we toss it, we ignore it. We turn this cycle completely around. Bleep the evil, change it to good. If you get bit, give them food. A rock acts like a rock, a dog like a dog, a child like a child, a soldier like a soldier, a saint like a saint. There is a rock in every one of us. There is an animal in each one of us. There is a kid, a killer, and a saint in all of us. If you're acting in a certain way, that is because that is who you are deep inside. Who you are inside is how you will act outside. Change the inside, and the outside must change. Take a good look at yourself. Is your life a knee-jerk reaction? How much of your life is a conscious and premeditated act? Animals are a product of their circumstances. You're human. The circumstances can be a product of you. You're a volitional being. You create the circumstances. You have free will within. You refuse to allow the habits of body and mind to control you. You are real as a conscious being because you have inner spiritual freedom. Refuse to be a machine-like animal dominated by the mechanical functions of your physical body. Take the spiritual challenge. The challenge is one that has stumped many a sleuth. The age-old question, how to tame the flesh? How do I control my fears and insecurity? How do I control my anger and resentment? How do I control my ego? How do I keep from eating and drinking too much? Okay, so how? The grand old traditional way was to split yourself into two, the flesh and the spirit, then you let them fight. The mind takes sides and the battles begin. Overpower the other side, fight, fight, fight. The flesh wins, the spirit wins, the flesh wins, the flesh wins, the flesh wins again and again. So you give up because it's too hard. And it's hard because you are divided. You lose all your energy fighting yourself. How can you accomplish anything with half your energy? Let your mind empower your soul. The flesh and spirit will then become whole. The battle within fades. Good actions come naturally. Moving from your whole self is the new way. The new way is to be whole by empowering the soul. This is way old. You split yourself and fight yourself. You think of your negative aspects as an enemy. You force yourself through sheer willpower. This is the new, cool, and creative way. You accept all of yourself as a whole. You make decisions that pleases the whole, not just your mind, not just your body, not just your spirit, but all three. It doesn't mean that you don't have vices. It doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It means you're okay with who you are as you are. Then, if you really want to change, you can do it without fighting yourself. You move in the direction you want to go, peacefully, with no conflict within, as a whole. But which part of you will lead? Who will do the deed? Is it your body? Sure, sometimes you have to allow the body to lead. Sometimes give the wants, desires, and emotions of the body top priority. There are things your animal body needs to do, like eat, play, and have sex. 
These animal things are not evil or wrong, it's just a part of being human in a matter of control and moderation. But who controls? Who moderates? Do you control your body, or does your body control you? Is it your mind? Let the mind be the master. Sometimes give logic and intellect the power to lead. But mechanical logic and cold intellect lacks love and heart and baby's farts and humor, magic, and fun, which are so desirable to leading a fulfilling life. When we are babies, the body is the master. The body does what it wants. Pee freely, sleep, poop, and cry. As we grow, the mind becomes our master. We act out our thoughts. But the mind is torn by the wants of the body and the leadings of the spirit. Logic and intellect often can't do the job. So, who? How about your soul? What is soul? What is spirit? Just words. But they point to something real within us that you can feel. Feel your spirit, the essence of the creator that leads. Feel your soul, the essence of you that heeds. It is the part of you that knows right from wrong, good from evil, beauty from ugliness. The soul is the best of your body, the best of your mind, the best from your spirit. To truly understand what the soul is, you have to feel your own soul within. It is the greatest love of all. What is your greatest love within? What is your greatest desire? Everything you are is because of this greatest love within the heart of your heart. When you were a baby, the greatest desire may have been for mother's milk. Then it may have been the desire to play and have fun. Then it may have been wealth and status. This core value determines who you are and how you act. Some people upgrade this value only when in crisis. But when we do it regularly, purposefully, we are asserting our volition. We change the inside and we change the outside. But how do we do it exactly? Authorize your soul. It has been found in the halls of neuroscience, a thing called plasticity. The brain can be molded by the sparks of mentality. Worshipful meditation can create new brain cells and new connections to empower your inner awareness. You will become aware of your darkness. Don't shrink from it. Look at it unflinchingly, honestly. Acknowledge it, learn from it, then move on. You will become aware of your light. Do right by it, cherish it, and be thankful, then move on. This awareness of light and darkness, right and wrong, is the foundation of your soul. Meditate on your light, meditate on your darkness. Who are you? Who do you want to be? Really want to be? Way deep inside. There are many paths, find your own. If you really want it, knock on the door. It's a universal pleasure, not a painful chore. Reflection and meditation. Look at your true motivations deep within. Are you satisfied with who you are within? Only you know who you truly are inside. Look. Do you see the self-centered child within? Do you see the insecure kid that is afraid to try anything new? Do you see the spiritual infant crying, give me, give me, give me? But see also the dynamic young soul within. This is your true self. It realizes that you are connected to everyone and that you are a valued member of the universe. It is the soul that needs authorization from your mind. But for your mind to authorize your soul, your ego has to change from being a separate part to uniting with the whole. More is better, yet less is more. What is good for you, and yet good for all? Simply just allow your soul to make you whole. For the soul has a connection to the divine spark within, deep inside you, the source of everything love at its purest, an intelligence all-knowing. Many names there are for this love intelligence. The name is not important, the reality of it is. The reality is, we draw from this all our love, all our energies. So go deeply, touch the source, feel this presence, feel it now. Affirm deeply, I am a wonderful being, one and whole with source healthy and well, thankful for my life. I intend to give and receive unconditional love to reflect truth, beauty, and good to express my soul. 
I act with mindfulness and volition for the benefit of all with kindness and love. Your mind is like a prism, your affirmations the light. In the darkness a rainbow appears in your life. It is done, your ego relaxes and allows your soul to take the lead. To achieve wholeness your mind acquiesces, the leadership finally changes, authority goes to your soul. There is no struggle like in the days of yore, when battles raged within your core. Forget that pattern, the old way was a chore. The new way is fun, relaxing and is a pleasure, it is the highlight of your day. The war has ended. The flesh and the spirit are at peace. You are fully relaxed, one with your soul and are whole. You now realize the best thing for the universe is the best thing for you. You are a child on the shores of infinity. You are evolving to a higher state of being. You manifest the best of yourself. You are now an evolved human, a spiritualized human being. You are now a co-creator with the source, one with the greatest love within. You can now start to manifest this love in the real world. You can now recreate your life according to your inner spiritual vision. You were once carried and held by the universal parent. Now you can go out on your own, free to explore the true wonders of life. But now you've got another challenge. How are you going to manifest your creativity? How do you actually convert the greatest love within into physical reality? First of all, don't try too hard. Remember, you don't want to fight yourself or force yourself. Act from your soul, not for your comfort or ego. Relax, let it come to you. When you have authorized your soul, you will start doing the right things naturally, more and more without uncertainty. Your actions will simply be lifted up by the buoyancy of your soul. Identify with transient values and become transient. Identify with eternal values and become eternal. Keep up your high state of consciousness. Cultivate the stillness within. Therein lies the strength, the love, the passion, the will, the intent and desire. You've held it in for so long. Now open up, release the love act. Start by doing those things that you always knew you should do but didn't because you were led by your body and ego instead of your soul. Simple things like eating more healthily, exercising, service, reaching out, prayer, meditation, the arts, be creative. Since you are now coming from the soul, all things are doable. What was once difficult is now kids play. Once you have covered the basics, do things you've never done before. Conquer your fears, challenge your limitations, recreate your true self. Have faith that you can succeed at doing almost anything. Reach for the highest goal. If people always remember that they cannot lose by experimenting, they can only lose by trying nothing, much will be learned. Atom by atom, brain cell by brain cell, service by service, prayer by prayer, meditation by meditation, you evolve. Your soul leads the way, you have authorized it. Peace reigns within. As a whole person, you perceive the world's true nature. As the pieces come together, you begin to see a bigger picture. Our wholeness is Earth's wholeness. When enough of us authorize our souls, the earth as a whole becomes truly one with the universe. We are in reality evolving the soul of earth. Together we create earth's enlightened consciousness. For we are the organic part of earth that reaches out to the source. We have the creative spark within us. We have volition. We are co-creators. The earth needs self-awareness and it starts with you right here, right now. Act on these truths. With every revolution, a new iteration.